Political pressure forces government MPs with dual citizenship to resign. Government MPs who resign cannot continue serving in ministerial positions. Elderly woman killed in home fire. And Shimon Hetimai's poor showing at IPL continues. These and more coming up after these messages. Stay with us. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line, starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens, available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. Bison Windows and Doors, fully equipped to handle all your commercial projects. Whether you're constructing a small or large commercial building, residential property, or just upgrading your home, they got you covered. Bison Windows and Doors, providing unmatched quality windows for your home, office, and commercial building. Located at 1228 Eccles Industrial Site. For more information, call 662-4197 or 622-6943. Secure your property, secure your life. Get the best security service from us at KGM Security Services Incorporated. Highly trained armed and unarmed officers at affordable rates. We offer armed mobile patrols, personal security, cash escort, alarm monitoring, quick response units, also rental of executive vehicles with armed guards. 74 Axora Avenue, Bel Air Park, Georgetown. Contact us on 663-3227-699-0084 or 654-1800. KGM Security Services Incorporated. We are your source for security. For the best in truck spares, Daff and Cummings, it's A1 Auto Value New Road Freedom Hoop on the west side. Check them out today for seals, alternators, filters, air valves, pistons and rings, air dryers, shocks, bearings and a whole lot more. Parts and accessories for cars and minibuses. Call today on 254-0890. 64 New Road Freedom Hoop on the west coast of Demerara. A1 Auto Value. Performance without compromise. Good evening and welcome to this, our Tuesday, April 2, 2019 edition of News Update. I'm Sandy Ramutar, our top story this evening. The pressure from the Opposition People's Progressive Party and Civil Society has forced four top government ministers who hold dual citizenship to resign as members of Parliament. Their resignation came merely two weeks after the Appellate Court upheld a ruling that anyone with dual citizenship was illegally occupying their seat in the National Assembly. President David Granger has received and accepted the resignation of all four government members of parliament that have dual citizenship. The four are Carl Greenwich, Dominic Gaskin, Joe Harmon and Dr. Rupert Rupnarain. The resignation came ahead of the April 11th sitting of the National Assembly, the first sitting for 2019. However, the resignation of the members of parliament has a dire consequences as the constitution says their post as ministers must become vacant. According to Article 183.2a and I quote, the office of any other minister shall become vacant if the holder of the office ceases to be a member of the assembly for any cause other than a dissolution of parliament, end of quote. It means that there is an automatic resignation of a minister when he or she resigns from parliament. It is now left for the PPP members of parliament that hold the dual citizenship to effectuate their stance. Two of the three agreed to renounce their foreign passport. However, a renouncement of their foreign citizenship cannot change that at the time of their election to the house, they were unqualified. The issue of dual citizenship arose after the confidence motion was declared as validly passed by the Speaker of the National Assembly, Dr. Barton Scotland. 
in an attempt to invalidate the vote of Charandas Prasad, a former government MP. The government used the argument that his vote should not count as he is a dual citizen. The government will need to replace their parliamentarians. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. Meanwhile, former Attorney General Anil Nanlal made it categorical that all coalition dual citizen parliamentarians will have to vacate their ministerial posts once resigned as parliamentarians. Former Attorney General Anil Nanlal says it would be inconceivable for dual citizen coalition parliamentarians to resign from their posts and continue as ministers of government. His statement came on the heels of the announcement that all dual citizen government members have resigned and will not be attending the April 11th sitting of the National Assembly. The former Attorney General said the parliament. Opposition People's Progressive Party says the country is adrift in the absence of President David Grange and coalition government ministers who have ruled themselves at planning campaign events and collecting perks. The party in a statement said that crucial policy making to tackle major issues affecting Guyanese is non existence, while Guyanese are losing jobs, welfare, and are facing increased hardships. The party added that in the face of all of this, a tears April 2, 2019 statement from the Ministry of the Presidency announced that President David Granger received and accepted the resignation of all coalition members of Parliament who are holders of a dual citizenship, a cryptic announcement that was not accompanied by clarity to several significant questions. The party said this has now pushed the nation into a deepened state of uncertainty. It added that at the top of the list of unanswered questions is who will take charge of the key ministries headed by the coalition members of parliament who have resigned, specifically the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Other questions include who are the coalition members of parliament holding dual citizenship and why they were not named. Are there more than four members of parliament who hold dual citizenship? As such, the parties of the view that the AP and UAFC coalition government changed direction after the party pointed out the duplicity of the coalition government of arguing in the courts that the vote of a former parliamentarian charged as resort should be invalidated for the no confidence motion and arrogantly insisting that all government parliamentarians, including those holding dual citizenship, will be the present to anticipate the sitting of the National Assembly in April 11, 2019, where they will continue to vote votes that the coalition would no doubt count as valid. The party believes that the coalition government's change in position is a ploy developed with a distance hope that they will strengthen their appeal at the current Court of Justice. The Chief Justice of Roxon George Wilshire was clear that ineligibility to sit as a parliamentarian and validating the vote of the parliamentarian who was ineligible to sit in the National Assembly are two separate things. For the Chief Justice's asking was also clear that Article 165.2 of the Constitution protects per swords vote. It added that with the acceptance of the resignation of all coalition members of parliament who are holders of dual citizenship, the party expresses the hope that the cynical positions will not now be created for the coalition members of parliament who have resigned. Former Attorney General Anil Nandla has made clear that the Opposition People's Progressive Party will put itself on illegal grounds once it attends Parliament when it reconvenes on April 11. Former Attorney General Anil Nandlal said it would not be legal for the Opposition Party to attend Parliament when it reconvenes on April 11. Nandlal said once the Opposition colludes with the government to successfully pass legislation, both parties will be reverting to the status quo against the ruling of the Appellate Court. For this reason, the Opposition plans to not attend parliamentary sitting until the Carbon Court of Justice rules on the validity of the no-confidence vote. If, for example, we go back to the National Assembly and we pass a series of laws or we do a number of things in the Parliament that the no confidence motion was validly passed. The consequence of that ruling means that we will be reverting to the status quo ante the Court of Appeal ruling. The government moved to the High Court to seek redress on the validity of the December 21 confidence motion after a request to have the motion reviewed by the Speaker of the National Assembly, Dr. Barton Scotland, was rejected. Chief Justice Roxon George Wilshire also upheld the National Assembly's decision. But on March 22, the Court of Appeal in a 2-1 majority decision invalidated the motion and overturned the High Court's decision. The opposition nominated commissioners on the Ghana Elections Commission said they were forced to walk out of today's meeting in protest of 
Jacob Chairman James Patterson refusal to allow commissioners to participate in an agenda item that is commissioners' comments, a fixed item on the agenda. The commissioners says Gunrat and Robson Ben in a joint statement said Chairman Patterson's seemingly intent on only allowing continued discussion on elections arising out of House to House registration, a matter on which discussion ended abruptly at the last statutory meeting of Tuesday, March 26, 2019. The commissioners said the chairman, in collusion with the government nominated commissioners, intended to avoid any references to several matters, including GCAM's hiring practice, threaten legal actions against the commission if it proceeds with House to House registration, and the addition of the commission as a party to the ongoing Carbon Code of Justice hearing of the validity of the no confidence motion. We tell you now the test conducted on two of the manganese mining workers who were lifted to Georgian Public Hospital Corporation after falling severely ill have come back positive for leptospirosis. Since the findings, operations at the Masus Ridge Parima Wani mining site were halted. Well, I know two of them are critical initially, and they are still critical. So we're working towards the, the management because they're um, organ diseases in some cases, kidney, you know, liver, and so forth. So we have to, you know, it has this, nature has a way of looking after itself. And so we, there's a time you can't shortcut anything. Junior Minister of Public Health, Dr. Karen Cummings. According to Minister Cummings, all eight workers of the Manganese Mining Company are being closely monitored and treated at the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation. Confirming that the medical condition of two of the ill workers are listed as critical, with both of them having a severe case of leptospirosis, the minister added that some samples have been sent to the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CARFA, to confirm the type of infection. The results are expected to be in shortly. In the meantime, uh, our provisional diagnosis is leptospirosis and we're treating accordingly. And of course, we take all the necessary um, precautions. At the, we've closed down the hospital at Pakira, which is uh, northwest there and so we have um, been sending them out here to Georgian Hospital. Based on a source, the manganese workers prior to them taking ill had interfered with an underground bat nest which is believed to be the source of the leptospirosis bacteria. Leptospirosis is a rare bacterial infection humans get from animals. The infection is spread through the urine from dogs, rodents and farm animals. Some of the symptoms of leptospirosis in humans are similar to those of the flu and dengue viruses. Reporting from TV News Update, LaShawna Gomes, Cornelius. You're watching MTV's News Update. More news after the break. Stay with us. Did you know almost one-third of deaths in Guyana are heart-related? Chronic inflammation is the root cause of atherosclerosis, the process that leads to cholesterol-clogged arteries. You can now lower high triglyceride levels with Omega XL and reduce the dangerous inflammation that causes these problems. So to ensure a healthy heart and reduce your risk of disease, get your Omega XL today. Live long, stay strong with Omega XL. Everything is connected, our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. 
Are you invited to that important event but don't know what to wear or frustrated you're wearing the same dress as everyone else? You crave for this exclusive look? Then do just that with dresses from Exclusive Dresses to Impress. Visit Exclusive Dresses to Impress at Giveland Mall. Contact number 6570166. Welcome back, you're still with MTV's News Update. Former Attorney General Anand Nand Lal has reassured Ghanese that the nation will be at ease as a final ruling by the Carbon Court of Justice will clear all the doubts on a no-confidence vote. Former Attorney General Anil Nandlal has made clear that all doubts will be extinguished when the Carbon Court of Justice draws the final conclusion on the no-confidence vote. The hearing on matters for the appeal rulings on the no-confidence vote is scheduled for May 10 at the Carbon Court of Justice. Well then, the, it means then that the no-confidence motion obstacles, all doubts would have been extinguished which would be that we will have to go back to Parliament. On the night of December 21, 33 of the 65 members of the National Assembly voted in favour of the no-confidence motion. Days after the successful passage of the motion, the government argued that 34 votes were required for an absolute majority to pass the motion. The matter came before the Chief Justice in the High Court where she ruled that 33 votes were required, but in appeal at the Court of Appeal, it was held that 34 votes were required. As many Guyanese are still confused about a confidence motion and the requisite majority to pass such a motion, political scientist Dr. David Hines is calling for a self-explanatory constitution. The confidence motion and the appointment of a GCOM chairman have in recent times fostered constitutional arguments as the laws are not expressly clear. It is due to this phenomenon that political scientist Dr. David Hines has called for regular constitutional reform to ensure the laws are self-explanatory. Our constitutions have to be explicit Excellent. on these matters that have the propensity for explosion. When we are going to constitutional reform, we should say explicitly what a majority means, what this means, what that means, and so forth. Because in ethnic societies like ours, once you leave it for interpretation, it, it, it becomes mm -hmm. caught up yeah. with the old nonsense. So I think more than ever, we now need constitutional, and I would go beyond constitutional reform. We need constitutional change. I'm a, I'm a bit says on this. What we need is constitutional change to bring those constitutions up to speed with, 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 with where we are. Societies like ours should be, should have constitutional reform every other decade. The coalition government, after entering office in 2015, agreed that reformation of the constitution is necessary and has allocated millions of dollars towards this venture. Though some consultations were held in parts of the country, the actual process of reformation has not begun. The last time there was constitutional change was in 2000, when the current contentious Article 106 sub-Articles 6 and 7 were reinserted. Since then, a Parliamentary Committee for Constitutional Reform was created. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. A fire of unknown origin claimed the life of a centenarian who lived alone at First Avenue, Bartica, Region 7. Up to press time, fire officials were still investigating the origin of the blaze. The dead woman has been identified as 100-year-old Ethel Lucille Mosley, also known as Auntie Lou. Still under investigation, authorities are yet to pronounce on what caused the fire. In January, the elderly mother of three had celebrated her 100th birthday in the presence of loved ones. Mayor Marshall, upon learning of Ethel Mosley's tragic demise in a statement, said that the loss was really sad and that she did not deserve to go the way she went. It was noted by the mayor that Mosley lived in an old wooden house which was entirely consumed in fire within a short space of time. Based on information provided, neighbors quickly called the fire tender after noticing the woman's house on fire. 
The neighbors attempted to rescue the woman from the blaze but were prevented from doing so due to the intensity of the heat. When firefighters arrived on scene, it was too late. Residents claimed that they heard no songs or screaming coming from the house. They believe that a woman might have gone to bed leaving a lit candle. Investigations are ongoing. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashawna Gomes, Cornelius. As rice farmers are receiving a fair price per bag of paddy, the Ghana Rice Development Board has revealed that the sector is on track to achieving its first crop target of 520 tons of paddy. With only 36% of paddy for the first crop harvested, production has reached 280 metric tons. This is equivalent to 130,000 five tons of rice that have been harvested as of March 28, 2019. In the absence of the normal wet season in December, 88,147 hectares of farmland were able to be cultivated, which is 7,112 hectares more than the last crop of 2018. The Guyana Rice Development Board is confident that the sector will attain its first crop target of 520 tons of paddy. Last year, over 960 tons of rice were produced, which raked in U.S. $186 million. Currently, farmers are being paid between $2,400 and $3,000 per bag of paddy. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. The Ministry of Public Health earlier today commissioned a modern new water ambulance at the Square of the Revolution. The boat, which was procured at the cost of $16 million, will serve residents of regions 6, 7 and 10. Fully equipped with the medical apparatus of any ambulance, the boat can carry a total of four patients at a time. The Burby service is approximately 120 miles long. Moving from point A to point B in a riverine community is not easy because you have to think about costs and the cost of fuel is very expensive. Univer um, Ministry of Health policy is that of universal health care. It means that if the residents cannot get to us, we will get to them, right? And through our primary health care setting. We will be doing outreaches in these urban areas. We'll be continuing. This will just aid us with our outreaches. With a water ambulance system already in place, Regional Health Officer of Region 10, Dr. Pansy Armstrong, noted that for the period of 2018, about 3,000 individuals benefited from its services. As recent as January of this year, the Ministry of Public Health also commissioned a similar water ambulance to the community of Bartica in Region 7. That water ambulance, which was built by a local contractor, was done at a cost of $11 million. Reporting from TV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. Selene Griffith now joins us with today's Court Roundup. The man who went berserk and killed a 13-month-old child as well as injured her 12-year-old aunt was today sentenced after he appeared before Justice Navinder Singh at the Supreme Court of Judicature. Former GDF rank Mark Angoy, 44 of Busby Dam, Craig Eastbank de Marara, was sentenced to 22 years imprisonment after pleading guilty to a lesser count of manslaughter. He was accused of killing 13-month-old Ariane Gill and wounding the child's aunt Ashley Wellington on October 18, 2015 at Eastville Housing Scheme East Coast de Marara. He was sentenced to 14 years for the murder and 8 years for the felonious wounding. The sentences will run concurrently. On the day in question, he reportedly went to his lover's Annandale East Coast Demerara home with the intention of killing her after he found out she had gotten a restraining order against him. The bullets, however, struck and killed a 13-month-old child and wounded her aunt. It was also reported that Angoy was previously charged but subsequently acquitted for the murder of a man back in 1998 at Isano Mazaruni Region 7. Meanwhile... A man was today sentenced to 15 years in prison after being convicted of manslaughter. Tyrone Rowe, popularly known as Cobra of Our Boys, son, was charged for the 2010 murder of Troy Collymore, but pleaded guilty to a lesser count of manslaughter when he appeared before Justice Navinder Singh today at the Supreme Court of Judicature. 
He also pleaded guilty to an armed robbery charge and was sentenced to nine years. The sentences will run concurrently and the time spent on remand will be deducted from his sentence, which will result in him spending 15 years in prison. In August 2010, Collie Moore was at the drugstore when Cobra and two other men carried out a robbery on said store. The bandits made off with eight laptops which they took from the store, as well as jewelry valued at over $900,000 and an undisclosed amount of cash from Collie Moore and another individual. During the robbery, several wrongs were discharged, which resulted in one of Cobra's accomplices being shot and killed. Collie Moore was shot to the head and two other individuals at the scene suffered injuries. Cobra and his accomplice made good their escape. Collie Moore was declared brain dead by doctors and succumbed two days later. Cobra was subsequently apprehended and charged. In 2013, he was found guilty for the murder of Collie Moore and was sentenced to 78 years by Justice Singh. However, he appealed the ruling which was granted and in July 2018, his conviction and sentencing were overturned. As such, he was entitled to a new trial which led to his 15-year sentence today. In another matter, the man who brutally murdered his wife today appeared before Magistrate Renita Singh at the Albion Magistrate's Court. Gavin Gill was not required to plead to the indictable charge which stated that on March 30, he murdered Omawati Gill at Dr. Tutsi Street Williamsburg quarantine were beasts. The mother of one reportedly moved out some two weeks ago along with her seven-month-old baby after the defendant became abusive towards her. According to reports, while on her way to work on Saturday last, she was struck down by her husband. The man allegedly then exited the car and with a knife stabbed the woman several times before chopping her with a cutlass. He was subsequently arrested by members of a police patrol unit. Gill was remanded to prison until April 23 when he will reappear at the Albion Magistrates Court. Finally, a mother of three was today hauled before the court on a narcotics charge. 32-year-old Denisha Harris of Law 33 Campbellville Housing Scheme pleaded not guilty to the charge which read that on March 29 at the aforementioned address, she had 91 grams of cannabis in her possession for the purpose of trafficking. Reports indicate that on the day in question, ranks from the Kitty police station went to the woman's home and approached her front door. Upon seeing the police, she allegedly ran inside the house and was observed by a rank in the yard, throwing a bag out of a window. When the bag was examined, the suspected narcotic was found inside. Harris was told of the offence, to which she denied. She was arrested and subsequently charged. Police prosecutor Gordon Mansfield had no objections to bail, which was granted in the sum of $120,000. Harris is scheduled to reappear in court on April 24. Reporting for MTV's Court Roundup, Celine Griffith. Here again is Celine Griffith with your health tip. Head lice are tiny insects that feed on blood from the human scalp. An infestation of head lice called pediculosis capitis most often affects children and usually results from the direct transfer of lice from the hair of one person to the hair of another. A head lice infestation is not a sign of poor personal hygiene or an unclean living environment. Head lice don't carry bacterial or viral infectious diseases. Over-the-counter and prescription medications are available to treat head lice. Following treatment instructions carefully is important for ridding your scalp and hair of lice and their eggs. Symptoms You may not be aware of a lice infestation. However, common signs and symptoms can include Itching Itching on the scalp, neck and ears is the most common symptom. This is an allergic reaction to louse saliva. When a person has an infestation for the first time, itching may not occur for two to six weeks after infestation. Lice on scalp Lice may be visible but are difficult to spot because they are small, avoid light and move quickly. Lice eggs or knit on hair shafts. Knits stick to hair shafts and incubating knits may be difficult to see because they are very tiny. They are easiest to spot around the ears and the hairline of the neck. However, the presence of knits doesn't necessarily indicate an active infestation. Causes A head louse is a tan or grayish insect about the size of a strawberry seed. It feeds on human blood that it extracts from the scalp. The female louse produces a sticky substance that adheres each egg to a hair shaft. An egg is attached approximately 4 mm from the base of the shaft, an environment that provides an ideal temperature for incubating the egg. Transmission Head lice crawl, but they cannot jump or fly. Most often, transmission of a head louse from one person to another is by direct contact. Therefore, transmission is most often within a family or among children who have close contact at school or play. Treatment your doctor will likely recommend an over-the-counter medication that kills lice and some of the eggs. These medications may not kill recently laid eggs. 
Therefore, an appropriately timed second treatment is usually necessary to kill nymphs after they hatch but before they become adult lice. Lifestyle and Home Remedies If you prefer not to use a medication for treating a head lice infestation, you may consider an alternative home treatment. However, there is little to no clinical evidence of the effectiveness of such treatments. Essential Oils Small clinical studies have suggested that some natural plant oils may have a toxic effect on lice and eggs, such as tea tree oil and anise oil. Smothering Agents A number of household products are used to treat head lice infestations. The reasoning is that these products deprive the lice and incubating eggs of air. The product is applied to the hair, covered with a shower cap and left on overnight. Products used for this purpose include mayonnaise, olive oil, butter, petroleum jelly. Flammable products such as kerosene or gasoline should never be used to kill lice or to remove nits. As a precaution, you may clean items that the affected person has used in the previous two days. Cleaning recommendations include the following. 1. Wash items in hot water. Wash bedding, stuffed animals and clothing in hot soapy water and dry at high heat. 2. Clean hair care items. Clean combs, brushes and hair accessories in hot soapy water. 3. Seal items in plastic bags. Seal items that cannot be washed in plastic bags for two weeks. Finally, vacuum. Give the floor and upholstered furniture a good vacuuming. Coming up after the break, MTV's sports update and more. Stay with us. Mark? I'm in the kitchen. Make an impression with the finest styles imported by Lens. Lens has a huge selection of various styles for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our towels are of grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our locations to get the best in towels. Lens, our product, your creation. Hey, you have a growing flesh there, and there too, and there is another one. Those ugly and annoying growing flesh, like a plague. Ignoring them, and before you know, you have them everywhere. SlimJet presenting Coliomac, the most effective growing flesh and wall remover. Painlessly remove ugly growing flesh is the quick and effective way. Get soft, smooth, growing flesh-free skin, guarantee. Just apply Colomac twice a day and the growing flesh just dry up and fall off. Easy, quick and painless. Stop suffering and feeling embarrassed. Remove those ugly growing flesh with Colomac. Only at the Slim Jet City Mall second floor. It happens. Your septic tank is full. All the waste from your toilet goes into your septic tank through the sewage line. When your tank is full, the two most common indicators are an overflowing tank and an overflowing toilet. It is recommended that Sivan's Waste Management empty your septic tank every two to three years to avoid any embarrassment. And before you can say, shh, it's gone. Call Sivan's Waste Management today at 218-1455 or 218-1156. Introducing the new Softex Soft toilet, toilet tissue, tissue, now available across Guyana. Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle, soft to, and every gentle touch. to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by B Pats Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The, the choice, choice is, is clear. clear. Two soft text toilet tissue, super soft and super durable, guaranteed. Your one-stop decor solution for gala dinners, weddings, birthdays, cocktail functions, backdrops, props, and more. Check out exclusive decor design, ground floor, city mall. We have a wide variety to suit your stylish seating and table decor, exclusive centerpieces, colorful marrow, and much more. Working with a small budget? No problem. We've got you covered. Call 225-4434 or 657-0166. We listen, we create, you enjoy.
Ultra Lubricants, the leading lubricants for tropical conditions, has been serving you for over 40 years, extending the life cycle of your vehicle's engine by protecting it from wear and corrosion removes impurities, and reducing frequent vehicle oil changes. Ultra Lubricants is for every market, from two-wheel light vehicle to trucks, construction, agriculture equipment, mining activities, and boating. Ultra Lubricants, world-class lubricants for tropical conditions. Distributed by Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. And available nationwide. Welcome to MTV's Sports Update. The Rajasthan Royals earned their first points of the Vivo IPL 2019 after they defeated the Royal Challengers Bangalore by seven wickets earlier today. After opting to bowl first at the Sawai Mansing Stadium, the Royals restricted RCB to 158 for four and then chased down the runs in the last over. The result leaves RCB as the only winless team in the competition. They have now lost all four matches they have played this season. In pursuit of 159, the Royals' openers came out all guns blazing with Ajinka Rahani and Joss Butler adding 55 runs in the power play overs. After Rahani was dismissed in the 8th over for 22 off 20 balls, trapped LBW by a googly from Yusvinger Chahal, Butler and Steve Smith added 44 in 5 overs. Their partnership was broken when Butler was forced into reaching for a tossed-up wide leg break, did not get sufficiently under the ball and picked out long off. Smith and Tripathi were involved in a 56-run stand that took the host to the brink. Tripathi brought up the win in style, hitting Yada for his 6-over square leg. Shreyas Gopal picked up RCB's top guns, Kohli and De Villiers, and then added the wicket of Shimron Hetmar, who just made one run. RCB failed to help their own cause by putting down three catches. Kohli put down Rahani, Yadav dropped Smith, and Ali eliminated Tripathi. Earlier, RCB, who made three changes to their side that took the field in the previous match, got off to a steady start with the opening pair of Patel and Kohli stitching together a 49-run partnership. RCB lost a bit of momentum when they lost three wickets in a short period of time to slip to 73 for three. After the pair was dismissed, Stonis and Ali added 32 runs in 2.5 overs to guide RCB to a respectable total. The 15th match of the season will see the Mumbai Indians facing the Chennai Super Kings tomorrow from 10 hours 30. Chelsea Griffith reported for MTV Sports Update. Qualifying for the 2019 CONCACAF Gold Cup qualification was a collective achievement of everyone who has contributed to football in Guyana and will take a future joint effort to reap the full benefits according to GFF President Dwayne Forward. Qualifying for the Men's CONCACAF Gold Cup is an achievement that belongs to the entire nation and Ford wants to dedicate this moment to everyone in Guyana who loves football. He added that it is truly a very humbling experience for him to be at the helm of the sport at this time and to share this extraordinary accomplishment with the other dedicated members of the GFF Executive Committee who contributed in equal measure to the intense work and many sacrifices this qualification campaign demanded of all of them. The sum of all tourism promotion and advertising cannot surpass the global visibility that the CONCACAF Gold Cup will bring to Guyana. When the Jaguars walk out on the pitch for their first game, the millions of people that will be watching either live or on television around the world will Google Guyana. The president disclosed that there is still a tremendous amount of work required in order to lay a robust and lasting foundation for the sustainable development of our sport. They are finally moving in the right direction, but everyone is needed on board as one team to achieve lasting success. The GFF cannot overhaul football without the help of corporate Guyana, the government of Guyana and other key stakeholders. A well-run sport will produce well-rounded men and women. Guyana wins when football wins. The CONCACAF Gold Cup is slated for June 15 to July 7. Chelsea Griffith reported for MGV Sports Update. Last weekend, the Ghana Amateur Basketball Association Let's Bet Sports First Division Knockout Championship concluded on the Burnham Basketball Court where the Cobras trumped over the Pleasant Guardians. The Cobras won the tip-off and played as a team to bring an end to the first quarter with 24 for 14. However, the Guardians regained their composure in the second quarter, acquiring a four-point lead. Sadly, their momentum was quickly short-lived as the Cobras replied with 36 for 32 at halftime. What had seemed like a possible victory turned out to be the last quarter for the Guardians as the Cobras struck, giving away a few points to extend their lead to 57 for 44. The Cobras did not once look back, and they secured the reins on the championship match by 18 points, 87 for 69. Meanwhile, earlier that night, the Eagles secured third place as they had the upper hand over the Pepsi Sonics with a 69 for 55 victory. Chelsea Griffith, reporter for MGV Sports Update. 
Last weekend, Delon Mahariu effortlessly proved why he's regarded as the fittest man in Guyana when he secured his fourth consecutive win in the 2019 Fitness Games. The fitness standout emerged top of a competitive field of athletes at the Careers Engineering title-sponsored one-day event staged at the National Park Tarmac. Mahadio, the CrossFit 592 athlete, won the event effortlessly, amassing 15 points to claim the title for the fourth time in the five-year history of the competition. The athlete with the lowest point was declared a champion. Kelvin Ball of Fusion Fitness copped second with 56 points, followed by Umisi Williams of Perry Fitness Gym in Linden with 57 points. On the female side, Ava Zalman of Rock CrossFit of Suriname won with 22 points, followed by the Guy News Peer former champion Simonica Duke of Genesis Fitness second with 26 points and the defending champion Delise Adonis of CrossFit 592 third with 29 points. The top three athletes in both the male and female categories received $300,000, and $100,000 respectively. Chelsea Griffith, Supportive MTV, Sports Update. A story came full circle this morning in Bahrain when Mick Schumacher stepped it into the cockpit of a Ferrari Formula One car 12 years and four months after his father Michael Schumacher vacated one the last time. Two days of testing in Bahrain, one for Ferrari followed by one for the affiliated Alfa Romeo team, are the first steps in a plan aimed at establishing whether the son of the most successful Grand Prix drive in history has the talent to follow his father's footsteps in, into F1. Michael's success and fame in 20-year-old Mick will have to do this in a spotlight with which most aspiring F1 drivers do not have to contend. But there is another dimension too, Michael's health following a skiing accident in 2013 which left him with several brain injuries since then, he has not been seen in public. More news coming up after the break, stay with us. Ultra Lubricants, the leading lubricants for tropical conditions, has been serving you for over 40 years, extending the life cycle of your vehicle's engine by protecting it from wear and corrosion removes impurities, and reducing frequent vehicle oil changes. Ultra Lubricants is for every market, from two-wheel light vehicle to trucks, construction, agriculture equipment, mining activities, and boating. Ultra Lubricants, world-class lubricants for tropical conditions. Distributed by Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. And available nationwide. Welcome back, you're still with MTV's News Update. Now for some news in the region. Venezuela's Supreme Court has asked for opposition leader Juan Guaido to be stripped of his parliamentary immunity, a move that could lead to his jailing. The pro-government constituent assembly is expected to be backed to their request. Mr. Guaido declared himself interim leader in January, gaining the support of more than 50 countries, including the United States. But President Nicolas Maduro has the major allies too and retains the crucial backing of the military. On the international scene, Canada is warning an average of a rare twice as fast as the rest of the world, a new scientific report indicates. The federal government climate report also warns that changes are already evident in many parts of the country and are projected to intensify. Canada's Arctic has seen the deepest impact and will continue to warm at more than double the global rate. The report suggests that many of the effects already seen are probably reversible. Canada's annual average temperature has increased by an estimated 1.7 degrees Celsius since 1948, when nationwide temperatures were first recorded. The largest temperature increases have since been in the north, the Paris Seas, and in northern British Columbia. Annual average temperature in northern Canada increased by approximately 2.3 degrees Celsius. And that has brought us to the end of regional and international news. Now let's take a look at the Ghana Stock Exchange closing prices for trading session 819. Let's now turn our attention to the Demer Harbour Bridge and the Burbies River Bridge schedules.
that's a wrap on today's broadcast. Before we go, here's a reminder of our top stories. Political pressure forces government MPs with dual citizenship to resign. Government MPs who resign cannot continue serving in ministerial positions. Elderly woman killed in home fire. And Shimon Hetimai's poor showing at IPL continues. Qatari broadcasts at 22 hours today and at 6 hours starting tomorrow. On behalf of our news and technical teams, I'm Sandy Ramutar. Thank you for watching. Have a good night.